Hello and welcome to Thursday's video for the Banksy class. Uh, it's cool. As usual, we're going to start a bit of reading, 20 minutes of reading from our bingo sheet or from uh, a book of our choice before we move on to our lessons for today. So our writing lesson, we're going to be writing a recount, uh, or planning a recount to be exact, a diary entry for Macy Brownstone. I've included a video that links to recounts and what they are from the BBC Bite Size website. It's a nice one that just reminds us of the different features that we'll be using and what we need to include. Um, and I've got a planning sheet on the website to help you. It doesn't need to be printed off. It is quite an easy sheet to uh, to draw in our books or just to use as a notes page to remind us of bits and pieces that we need. For maths, we're going to be looking at area today. After looking at perimeter yesterday, area is another good area to uh, another good, another good subject to look at. Uh, so hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, and in the afternoon, we're going to look at a iconic piece of um, of art, but also culture from the ancient Egyptian ancient Egyptians. It's called the Book of the Dead, and we'll look a little bit about the the history. And I've linked in a video for that of the Book of the Dead and then have a look at some of the artwork that was included in that book. Um, that important document for the Egyptians to do with their beliefs about the afterlife. So you are Marcy Brownstone and you are writing your diary the day that you were taken into the forest by your father. Uh, that very dark forest to that cave that you felt very, very... Uh, disappointed that you were not brave enough to go into, you felt as though you'd let down Arthur, um, and I want you to put that into a diary entry. How do you feel um, following that day? So I've given you this planning sheet on the website. You can just have it up on screen, or you can jot down in your books um, the notes to go with these different sections. This is just a way of me showing you what the diary entry will need to have. And if you look in the top right hand corner, it's got success criteria to start with. First person is Marcy Brownston writing this about herself. Past tense, these things have already happened. So please be careful with those verbs. Time connectives, um, we're gonna put things in an order, which is our next point. So time connectives are really important. The chronology is really important. We write this in the order that it happened. So have a look at the book again, if you, uh, if you need to. Have a look at your story map. Think about the order and that's what we're gonna write it. Uh, that's how we're gonna write it in our diary. We're going to use the five senses. We practiced that this week, so we can definitely get that in there. And we're going to talk about the thoughts and the feelings of Marcy Brownstone all the time. She is talking to this diary. She is summarizing what has happened and how she has felt. So some really, really emotive words used there, please. Now I split this into three sections. You might want to split it into more if you feel you need more paragraphs. I've split it into three sections. Each section has its own bubble that says thoughts and feelings because we want those all the time. This is what people put into their diaries. They put in how they felt and what they thought. It's a way of getting it onto a page and really exploring how someone feels, in particular this character, Marcy Brownstone. Remember, she is scared of the dark. She feels awful because she feels as though she's let her father down. There's a lot of feeling and thoughts that you can put into this. So the three six sections, we've got the introduction. We're just going to introduce what's happened, um, a little bit about your father, who's Arthur, um, and the, the reason that he may have taken you into the forest. And there's a big reason in the story. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm going to let you figure that out and put it into this writing. Arthur took you, Marcy Brownstone, into the forest to help you overcome something. Now, the main body, which may well be more than one paragraph when we've done this, is all those things that happened in the Thor forest as you were going through. And feel free to make up some individual events that may have happened in the forest. You yourself and Arthur may have um, come across certain things, talked about certain things. You have different thoughts and feelings that you want to talk about in all those, uh, that exploration. And finally, you'll come to that cave and you'll be met with that decision you either have to follow Arthur in or not unfortunately Marcy chose not to because she was so scared so we know why we need to put that in the diary and Marcy needs to explain why she didn't follow Arthur in um, and it's, it's a good text for that we've got some really clear understanding of how Marcy felt and why and then we've got our ending 
and that ending is just looking back and thinking about the day, how it's gone, has it been a good one, what we'd like to do differently if we ever had a day like this again, and what we might do in the future. So we've got that introduction, the main bits, and the ending full of thoughtful thoughts and feelings and those success criteria we need to see. Please remember this is a plan. So it will be um, you know, have as much detail in as we can manage for today, but it will form the skeleton of tomorrow's writing. So just the outline. So sometimes we might want to just write notes in, uh, on this plan, um, but make sure we give ourselves enough to use tomorrow. So for math, we've got finding area. We're going to be looking at the area inside a shape, a quadrilateral today. Um, and the area, as you can hopefully see on your screen, is that space inside of a shape. So we've got the lengths on the outside. This is a five by two rectangle. That is not what we want to do today. That was the perimeter. So that was yesterday. Today, we want to look at the area inside. And in the uh, lower key stage, uh, key stage two, years three and year four, we use a grid to help us with that. So all of these grids that we'll be using represent one centimeter squares. Those centimeter squares are very, very important when it comes to area. And I'll show you what we mean on the next slide. So area is measured in centimeter squares. Now a centimeter square, a single centimeter square is a square that is one centimeter long and one centimeter wide. And this is what we use to measure area. It's the space inside the shape, and we measure it in how many centimeter squares it is. For larger things, we might use meter squares um, just to make it a bit easier to measure. But today we're looking at centimeter squares. In your questions that you've been given, these ones are on the screen, you can also get them on the website if you'd prefer. Each of these squares is a centimeter square. I know that one of these shapes has an area of 30 centimeters square, and you'll see that on screen. I've written it with the digits that are 30. I've written the measurement centimeters as cm, and then I've written square squared as a little two that floats just a little bit higher than the rest of the words. That's important because if you're measuring the area, you have to get that measurement in the centimeter squares. So one of these shapes has 30 square centimeters inside of it. And I found that area just by counting the squares inside of the shape. So either A, B, C, or D has an area of 30 centimeters squared. I wanted it on screen to show you because I, I need you to be able to write the area in centimeters squared. Now you're going to have to find the area of all of these shapes, A, B, C, and D, and write the area either in the shape or underneath the shape or on a piece of paper. So you've got a record of it. Then what you're going to do is make comparisons. And if you look at the bottom of this sheet, this sheet it tells you it's got A something B, A something D, and so on. Lots and lots of different comparisons. You're going to use the greater than, less than, or equal to. Now, when you use these symbols, think back to key stage one, talk about the crocodile that eats the biggest number with these symbols and the mouth eats the biggest number. Or you can think about the videos that we've looked, upon, looked at online to help us remember these, these symbols and how to write them, that the pointy bottom points to the smallest number. Either way, you need to be able to use these greater than and less than symbols to compare the areas of these shapes. So for example, that first sentence may say A is greater than B, and that would mean that A has a greater area than B. However, it may not say that. It may say A is equal to B, or A is less than B, depending on what that area is. I need you to be able to find these areas, and I need you to be able to compare these areas. So this little maths task has a few steps to complete. There's also a BBC Bite Size lesson on their website, which has its own activities as well, if you prefer to do them. So if you've watched the video already that I linked in with this activity, you'll know that the Book of the Dead was a very important book that the Egyptians believed they needed to be able to ascend into their afterlife, to be able to live a happier life after they died. 
it tells them the rules, it tells them what they are expected to do. Uh, and it also looks quite intriguing the way it's drawn. It's drawn in a, in a traditional Egyptian art way with the, their, pe their characters being quite uh, distinctive. On it, there are lots and lots of gods and goddesses. They are the, the characters that are quite tall and powerful with animal heads. There's also humans on there as well. They're a little bit smaller and they're drawn, drawn with Egyptian clothing um, and hairstyles and goatees that the, uh, the men seem to have lots of. There's a monster as well that you'll learn about on the video who uh, devours humans and uh, if they are eaten, if they are judged not worthy, they cease to exist. They never exist anymore. So it's quite a uh, intriguing story and a belief that they had. Now what I'd like you to do after learning about the Book of the Dead is to go and make some of your very own Egyptian artwork and I've included on the website and also one of them on uh, on this video, some step-by-step -step guides to drawing like an Egyptian artist. So on this, this page, you'll be able to see I've included one about drawing like an Egyptian person. On the website, I've got some Egyptian gods and goddesses for you to draw, and you can find some more online as well if you're interested in this. Uh, uh, it's nice to have the step-by-step -step guides to help us, and it's a nice activity to explore the art and the culture of, the, of this civilization.